I'm Randy Nestor with H.E. Anderson Company and today the meter work is going to be done by Craig Scroggins our electronics department lead. So we, The meter typically will be in your line uh, the first step is going to be to loosen the couplings so that you can turn your meter over to access the cover plate. Uh, typically in your line at this point you would just take your wrench and remove these screws. Craig's going to have to a little different today because it's not installed in the line. Uh, the smaller meters that we have, the 50 gallon a minute size, the 20 gallon a minute size, use a half inch wrench. The inch and a half and the two inch use a three quarter inch wrench. The important thing to remember when disassembling and assembling your meter is that the O-rings are delicate. They can be stretched beyond their size easily and the plastic parts can be nicked by sharp objects. So anytime you're removing O-rings and putting them back in place, you need to make sure that you don't do any scraping of the O-ring or the plastic holding it at any time. So once the bottom plate is removed underneath we're going to have a seal retainer, which is the white object, and then the plate seal, which keeps water from leaking from the bottom of the meter. So with a small screwdriver, what you'll do is carefully work around the O-ring. And then gently remove it. Like I say, you want to try and avoid any stretching that you can. So just gently work your way around. Once the o-ring is removed, the plate just lifts up. At that point, uh, you should look for any debris or anything on an old meter. Look for anything that's around the o-ring, of course. The strainer basket is directly inside. Should be clear and free of any debris, rust, iron deposits. Okay, and then with another screwdriver, we're going to gently pry up on the screen there's an o-ring holding this screen into place it should not take much force you want to work your way around gently you will reach a point at which the piece pops out and then you can use the small screwdriver to remove the screen underneath the screen is the actual chamber assembly and the chamber seal so the next step is going to be just to lift up on your chamber and remove it. The seal will come out with it. The chamber is actually three pieces. Once you flip it over there's a cover and then there's a wheel and the shaft and housing. Uh, in this area you want to make sure there's no debris, make sure the wheel spins freely. It should slightly wobble but it shouldn't uh, be rough. You should, with your hand, you'll be able to feel that it's smooth. Uh, blowing across it with air, you know, will cause it to spin freely. As you'd like to put this together, once the wheel's in place, the cover, 
and the plate have a keyway. All of these pieces are keyed and the key matches. So what you do is line those pieces up, push them down together, and lower down into your chamber area that sh should be free and clear of any debris. There's also a keyway in this area. Just point out with the screwdriver here. And there's a matching keyway notch in the chamber. So as you drop in the chamber, you should be able to spin it until it drops down into the keyway. And at that point, it will no longer rotate freely. It is in position correctly. At this point, we'll take the larger of the two O-rings, or the, the smaller actually, sorry, and which is the uh, chamber seal, and just lay it in there. You'll notice Craig just kind of laid it in. And then with the screwdriver, you can work it into position. It's not going to go perfectly into place because the basket is actually what retains it in position. You just want to make sure it's close to the right position before you start putting in the basket. Okay, at that point, the O-ring is in position. We will take our screen, which is also keyed. You'll notice there are two keyways on the basket. And, of course, the corresponding keyways in the top of the chamber. Follow the same type of method. You're just going to lay it in, slightly to press. As it goes into position, you will notice that the blue protrusion will come up through the basket. Then you're going to want to seat the screen, particularly on the larger meters, to make sure that O-ring is properly in position. At this point, we can lay in the uh, seal retainer, which notice there is also a keyway here, which is going to lock into the same keyway in the chamber as the basket did. Once this is in this position, you'll notice that it does not rotate, and then also it is flush with the meter. It should not be sticking above at this point. If it is, your chamber seal is not in the correct position, and you would need to remove it and start again. The plate seal, which is the larger of the two O-rings, what you want to do is press it in at the quadrant points to get it started, which basically is just going to be at the screw points, and then work in from there to gradually press in the O-ring. If you start on one edge and then work your way around in the beginning, it will stretch and it makes it hard to go in. So you want to start it first and then go ahead and press it in. At this point, you would lay on the cover, which is the brass plate, and if everything is in proper position at this point, even before you put in the screws, you will notice the plate does set flush. The screws on these meters are stainless steel. Over time, yours may have some corrosion buildup from the brass on them or something. Uh, if you wanted to put a little bit of anti-seize lubricant on a used one, it would not hurt anything and it will help you to take it apart in the future. On the new meters, uh, they do not come with that, so we are not putting it back on here for the purpose of this video. Um, these bolts need to be snug, hand tight, and then about a quarter turn on all of them. At that point your meter is assembled, you would rotate your meter back in the correct position, tighten down your couplings, and your meter is ready to go.